Unchallenged leadership is never a good thing. Think about it this way, it leads to things like taxation without representation, wiretapping, or North Korea's Kim dynasty, not to be confused with the Kardashians, although they are an evil all their own. Now what Luke is actually trying to get at is that Toyota has led the mid-sized truck market for a long time unchallenged. But for 2015 that is set to change because General Motors is introducing two new mid-sized trucks. The GMC Canyon and this truck, the Chevrolet Colorado. Just to get it out of the way, yes, it is true that Toyota showed us a new generation of the Tacoma in the Detroit Auto Show earlier this year, and you can bet that we're already laying the groundwork for that comparison. But for now, it's still important to juxtapose the new Colorado with the old Tacoma, because Toyota's truck still is the mid-sized segment leader by a long shot, and because it competed directly with the previous Colorado, it should also give us a good measuring stick for how far GM's nameplate has come since its past generation. And my gosh, is there ever a difference? I mean, the Colorado's cabin feels modern through and through, especially beside the Tacoma that feels painfully outdated. And it really serves to underscore the fact that Toyota hasn't given any kind of meaningful updates to the Tacoma in a very long time. Frankly, nobody's given them a reason to. But the important thing is that people who are shopping for a mid-sized truck now don't have to compromise with outdated and antiquated technology anymore because there's new competition. To give you some examples, the interior for the Colorado does a great job of deadening outside sound. It's very quiet to sit in and you don't get a lot of engine noise. Meanwhile, with the Tacoma, a lot of road noise, tire roar, everything comes right through and it's, it's just a noisy truck to sit in. On top of that, Steve is driving the limited Tacoma, but it still comes with manually adjusted seats, and that's hugely disappointing. Meanwhile, I've got power seats, I've got pretty much everything that you'd expect in a modern vehicle, save adaptive cruise control, and I mean, it really is a very nice product. Not to mention how they drive, but we can shift gears for a second and let Steve tell you all about that. Well, the simple answer is they drive like small pickup trucks, but of course we're going to have to dive a little bit deeper than that. The first thing you'll notice when you drive these two trucks back to back is just how refined the Colorado is. The suspension setup is a lot softer, whereas in this Tacoma it can get really choppy over uneven surfaces. But that's not to say that the Colorado gives something up when it comes to capability. Both of them feel about the same once you have weight on the back, but the Colorado just offers a much more comfortable ride. Even the steering feel lends itself to that feeling of refinement. Here in the Tacoma we have an old school hydraulic setup, whereas the Colorado has electric power assisted steering. Now, in the Colorado, it's pretty progressive, so at low speeds, you have light steering, it makes it easy to get through a mall parking lot, but once you hit the highway, it stiffens up and it offers a lot of confidence. This Tacoma is sort of heavy at all times, and again, it just kind of feels like a brute when you're driving down the road. To make sure this wasn't just a beauty contest, we loaded up a snowmobile into the bed of each one of these small trucks to see how it would handle the weight. In the back of the Toyota, the sled didn't quite fit between the wheel wells, but we did get her in there. Now, once we hit the road, what I found really interesting is even with the weight over the rear axle, the ride was still a little bit rough. Sometimes you expect you put weight in, it'll sort of smooth it out, but this Tacoma still gives a rough ride. So if I was transporting that snowmobile for, let's say, 400 miles, I'm sure that I would be really tired at the end of that trip. Now on the other hand, and as you might expect, putting that weight in the back of the Chevrolet actually quieted and calmed the ride down a little bit. Now that sled weighs about 650 pounds, and in the back of the Colorado, it felt just right. Unfortunately though, like the Tacoma, the bed isn't quite wide enough to put that snowmobile in there without one of the skis jumping up on the wheel well. Now one area where the Toyota actually keeps up to the Chevy fairly well is in the power department. 
Now both of these V6s act sort of the same. Down low they don't have too much torque, but around three, four grand, both of these engines really start to pull and both of these trucks take off. Even with the snowmobile in the back, neither of them were breathing hard to really get moving. Yeah, I know you're thinking that doesn't make sense because the Colorado makes more power. Well, this Toyota has a significant weight advantage over that Chevrolet, which makes both of them feel equally powerful. And let's be honest, size matters. Although it wouldn't be fair at all to call either of these trucks small. They're just smaller than the half ton Silverado and Tundra. The fact that neither of these trucks are particularly wide also means that navigating rush hour traffic or driving through the middle of a city really isn't that big of a deal. But there are some big differences. For example, I also do find that you sit lower in the Colorado, which is much nicer. I mean, I'm only about five foot nine and the Tacoma doesn't really bother me, but I feel like I'm sitting pretty high up in the cab. And for somebody like me to be feeling like they're that high signals that, you know, I mean, if you're six feet tall, it might not be comfortable at all. And there's one last thing relative to the sizes of these trucks that you really need to consider. The fact that the Colorado has 8.2 inches of ground clearance relative to the Tacoma with 9.3. When it comes to the price tags, this Toyota starts to fall really short. Now, both of these trucks we have here today cost nearly the same, but you get way more in the Colorado. In the Colorado, you get the Z71 package, you get some neat features like having in-car Wi-Fi, and you also get power seats. And the pricing proposition for these two trucks looks even worse once you consider fuel economy. This morning, we took the two trucks on identical country road drive routes to try to get our best fuel economy numbers. In the Tacoma, we managed 15 miles per gallon, but in the Colorado, we managed 20 miles per gallon. Which means if you do buy the Chevy, you're going to be spending a lot less time and money at the gas station. In summary, the new Colorado really does look bolder than the Tacoma. Not to mention the old Colorado. City driving is a breeze in it thanks to how narrow it is, but if you plan to go salida around in the mud, I suggest getting the Z71 package. After all, it gives the Colorado Springs that are better suited to driving over a battle creek or a deer trail. Wow, Luke, it sounds like you are really homesick. But I guess that makes sense because this truck really is that good. The Colorado offers more for your money, a refined driving experience, and a modern powertrain. Really, this comparison leaves only one question. Will the new Tacoma make the same quantum leap that the Colorado has?